right, um, this section of the museum, I believe, is dedicated to the workers. And this is a locker, probably an actual locker. And it's showing the wing company. It's got the little thing there. And, um, and it's showing the guys here punching the clock. And, and now here's the, I think this is, oh, yeah, my dad. He worked in a screen shop. And when he first started working there, I'll tell you all this story. Uh, he um, got the job, and he was winding bobbins. And I have a bobbin. I'll, I'll show you that. And uh, it's got very thin copper wire, maybe 10, 15,000 thick copper wire. And you were, had a little machine just right here to show you. They would wind the bobbins. And then my dad would take them to the girls that were making the screens. And the screens were not, the screen machines were nothing more than a fabric weaving machines. They actually like make fabric, except they were making wire cloth. And they would be used for the screens. Well, the machines work, you know, the thing going back and forth and so on. And my dad was on, if you know what day work is, they don't have this today, but day work and piece work. Well, day work is you got paid X amount of dollars a day. Piece work was you got paid for each one of the uh, screens that you make, a dollar for each one, and you made 50 of them, you made 50 bucks that day. All right, well, the girls that were making the screens were on piece work, and my dad was on day work. But if it wasn't for my dad making the little bobbins, the girls couldn't make the screens and make their money. So he's working like crazy. He was telling me these stories, you know, and making this thing. He, Gino, Gino, hurry up, bring me the thing, bring me the thing. So he said to the other guy, he said, how do you slow these girls down? I mean, it's slow down. He said, no problem. He said, you stop the machine for a second. You put a twist in a wire, let it wind up on there again with the twist in it. And then when they get to that twist, it's going to run up and rip the whole screen apart and slow them down a little bit. So he did that. And then not too long after that, the union came in here. And then the union made rules that, you know, People were, if the guy would, he would get part of the piecework then. So it worked out. And then from there, he went to the submarine nets, which I mentioned before. We'll check that out in the other room. And then he went to, the, after World War II, he went to the rope structures. This is a picture right here of the whole complex. The whole complex. Here's the town, the start of the town this way. This is right where we're at right now, is I believe right here. And then the wire shop, the copper wire mill was here. And then the, the different, they, they actually made uh, castings here as well, I believe. Steel mill, they made steel. All this was here. And down there, right here, is what I kept talking about, the rope structures building, right here. 1,800 feet. You know, that looked right by the river there. The river's out that way, of course. And uh, that was what Roebling once was. And here, here's the, uh, picture of the factory and 18, 1985 in 1950 it was 1950 this picture and then they're showing making film here John Augustus Rowe he was born in 1806 and died in 1869 Joanna Herding Roebling John A. Roebling John Augustus Roebling is the main guy now from here let's see these are his, one of his sons, Washington, was his oldest son. Ferdinand was his second son, and Charles was his third son. And of course, that's, that's their wives, and so on. And then the tree goes this way to this dude. He was Carl Roebling, and I don't know, I'm here somewhere. They don't have Mary Roebling, but Mary Roebling came much later. She was like the last of the Roeblings, but uh, oh, here she is, Mary G. Mary G. Roebling right here. Now, I knew her. Believe it or not, I knew her. Your dad, Giselle, your dad knew her. Because she, you know, she died in 84. So we, you know, we was during our time. Um, uh, now, one thing I wanted to mention, they have him on here someplace, I'm sure. Washington Roebling. Now, we covered him before. Washington Roebling II. Uh, where is he? See him? Where's he at? You can talk to yourself. Oh, that's right, right there. Washington Augustus Road in the middle floor? Where? Right by your, 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 your hand. Down, 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 down. Down. Right there. Okay. Washington Road in the second. Okay, we'll talk about him for a minute. Mercer Carr. The Mercer Carr. There's a Mercer race about. Mercer Carr. And on occasion, they have Mercer cars here. There's a number of them made. And they're still existed today. They're worth a lot of bucks. And 
people come here with the actual cars. And on Washington Roadway, Cooser, which is a guy you don't know, but we know him, right? Mm -hmm. Cooser Farm and Cooser. And a couple of other dudes, they made the, the, the Mercer Automobile Company. And it was in Hamilton, New Jersey, where we, which is where I live. And uh, uh, 1912, 1912, where is he at again? Here. 1912, he was born in 1881, 1912, so he was like 31 years old. He died on the Titanic. Is that it over there? Okay, we're going to get there. He died on, he actually died on the Titanic. So then the company kept going until 1926, and that's a whole other story altogether. So you can look that up on uh, on the YouTube or on the internet, uh, and you'll find all about the, the Roman car. But the Roman fa family did a lot of things. They were they were a very prominent uh, family in Trenton, New Jersey. Here. So now, to back, but what I know about Mary Roebling up here, Mary Roebling, uh, she started the Trenton Trust Bank. The sign of the ship. Remember that? Your father's got the, the mm -hmm. sign of the ship somewhere. We got it in your house. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, she, he sta she started that. And then, of course, she died in 1984. Trent Trust. I'm sorry, no. It was the, the Trent Trust Company. The Trent Trust Bank. She was, a, she was the president and the chairman of the Trent Trust Bank. Wife of Sieg Siegfried Vogelman. He's up there. 1936 he died. And now this thing here is a representation of the Brooklyn Bridge, the caisson. Now, this part right here was made out of wood, and it had a metal edge that went all around it. They would sink this, put it in the water, and pump the water out of it, and sink it down to the base, and line it up and everything down under, under the river. And then they would go into it from the top, just like they're showing here, and they would dig out, dig out the dirt and everything and set it up through the hole. And as they dug the whole thing out on the inside, it would continually sink down, 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 down further, till it got to the rock, the pet rock, and once they got there, they would pump the water out and fill it with concrete. And that became the base of the bridge. And they still use that today. They still use this today. Uh, it was designed in France somewhere. And before the Brooklyn Bridge was built, John A. sent Washington, Roebling, his oldest son, over to check it out. Him and his wife spent a little bit of time in Europe trying to figure out how, to, how the caissons and learn about the caissons and so on. Now, the one thing that happened was that John Roebling got what's called the Benz, which was at that time called Caisson's disease, but being under a different pressure. And divers get this today. It's, uh, it's um, nitrogen in your blood. Now, I don't know, I don't know the medical stuff about it, but what happens is it's very painful. And if, you're not, if you don't decompress while coming, ascending up, going up, you have to take your time and get, you know, acclimated to each pressure as you come up. So it takes a while. Or when you come up, they put you in a decompression chamber. You can do it that way too. But they didn't have the decompression chamber back then. And Washington Roebling contracted the bends in, uh, during the building of the bridge. And I want to back up a little bit and we'll talk about John A. Now John A, he made the, the concept. He came up with the concept. Hey, yo, to a rock, we're going to build a bridge over here. Okay, so he got the he got the idea before the Civil War, and the Civil War stopped it, and then after the Civil War, they decided to build a bridge. Okay, well, while he was over there surveying, checking it out, and doing things, um, I think I mentioned this over at the over at the, uh, the uh, when it goes to the other place. Anyway, he, he got he got injured during the before the building of the bridge, and died before the bridge was built. So then Washington took it over. Then Washington got the bends. And he um, supervised the building of the Brooklyn Bridge from a hotel room uh, near the bridge because he was so sick he couldn't go. And his wife, um, what was her name? I think Emily or something like that. She, she actually, she actually supervised the building of the bridge and told the men what to do. And it got built. I think it was like 14 years. Took them to build it, 69 to 83, and uh, it finally got done, and uh, it was a wonder of the world. It was seven point It's only 3,800 feet long from tower to tower. I think the whole bridge is 3,800 feet. Um, the Golden Gate at one time was the largest suspension bridge in the world. The next one down would be um, 
the Brooklyn, uh, the, the GW Bridge, and then the next one down after that, believe it or not, was the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, and then the, 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 the today's standard, the Brooklyn Bridge, is actually short. And I was talking about the Mercer car. There's the Mercer race about. It was a yellow car, looked like the, a stud spare cat, similar. And uh, it was very, very fast, and it was popular, and it won a lot of races, but it only came in second in, in Indianapolis. Indianapolis 500. Ray Haroon was the winner of the 1905 Indianapolis. Uh, uh, I mean, he, maybe he wasn't even in, 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 in that race, but uh, well, he's, let's say he's a second race as an amateur, um, light race car, Savannah, Georgia, 1910. Uh, but anyway, he built these cars, and they're worth a lot of bucks. I believe Jay Leno has one of them. Of course. And, uh, this is, I guess, the interior of the Washington, of the Washington Roebling's house, 1892. Brooklyn Bridge stained glass windows, Tiffany Company. Look at that. Do you see that up there? Look at that. That was their house. Now, have you ever been in, you've been in the Cooser Mansion, right, Joseph? It's similar to this, right, inside there. Mm -hmm. We talked about Cooser before. All right, um, this is a little bit of a display. And I was talking about the uh, submarine nets. And this is what my dad called a grommet. And they were woven. I don't know how they did this, but they wove one inside the other. And they actually made these nets that were used during World War II. And uh, these are guys that were, you know, in the Army or whatever, Navy. And they were... Uh, they still on the nets. Now, they were actually, my father called them submarine nets, but they were actually torpedo nets and submarine, both, for, for both. And uh, uh, it was a big part of him making these things in World War II. In World War I, too, they made them, but Roebling made them. Yep. Now, this is a international time recorder company. This is probably the clock, the main clock for the time for everybody in this place who were clocking in and out. The master clock, that's right. That's what it is. Mr. Clock and was kept in the timekeeper's office. From the beginning of the plant history, workers punched clock were all calibrated to this master clock. Everything was calibrated to the master. 